Okay, this is going to be a fun one. We got a 248 gram piece of copper that's at 314 degrees, and we're going to drop it into a 390 gram uh, sample of water that's at 22.6 degrees. And what we're going to do is figure out what the final temperature is of that mixture. All right, reason I say this is interesting is because we technically have um, a unknown on both sides of this equation because we have the Q of the metal and the Q of the water on opposite sides. But we're going to know that the, uh, the metal, since it's a higher temperature, is going to lose heat. And we're going to go to the water. Now, even though both sides have an unknown, the unknown will be the same thing. All right, so let's expand this out. And I am going to put units on here, and then uh, we'll see how much space I need to reduce. So my Q is going to have the specific heat first and the mass, and since we got water here, I'm going to have the water listed first. I guess there's not a decimal there. And then TF, which is what we're going to solve for, minus the initial temperature. In this case, the initial temperature is 22.6. Right, and we're going to end up solving for that. On the other side, we'll have the specific heat of the copper, and 248 grams and TF again, but now it's minus 314 degrees Celsius. You're going to solve for TF. All right. Now, it is possible to do this, but a strategy you might, invo might involve here is since this is a multiple choice test, you could throw in one of those potential answers and see if you could solve for it that way. All right. But what I'm going to do is show you how I would solve this myself. And what I'm really going to do is distribute this negative into two separate equations. So I'm going to have the 4.184, and I'm going to drop the units to write this out, and the 390 times the TF, and then minus, I can't see my decimal there, 4.184 times 390 times 22.6. So I've distributed that negative into two separate things. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to take care of this negative with that. So I'm going to start with the 0 0.385 and the 248 and the 314. And then I'll subtract the 0 0.385 and the 248. And that's going to be multiplied by TF. All right, and now what I'm going to do is rearrange it so both terms with TF are on one side and everything else is on the other. So I'm going to move this negative over here, and I'm going to move this negative over here. So I'll have 4.184 times 390 times TF plus 0.385 times 248 times TF. So all I did there was I have moved this down, and I moved this one to the left, which is why it became positive. On the other side, I'll still have this 0.385 and 248 and 314. So this stuff just moved down, and this negative, I'm going to move over here and add it. And now, I'm essentially going to isolate this TF. So what I'm going to do is end up dividing down here by 4.184 and times 390 added to 0 0.385 and 248. Because that will have moved them, and this will over here will just be the TF. So I'm doing this math over here. So get up the calculator here, and I will have 0.385 times 248 times 314 plus, I'll do this in parentheses so we make sure it doesn't do anything weird, 4.184 times 390 
times 22.6. Close those parentheses. So that's everything on the top. I'm going to divide that by, in parentheses, 4.184 times 390 plus, and then I'll do another set of parentheses, 0.385 times point, or no, it's not point, I'm times just 248 and close two sets of parentheses equals, I get 38.7. So this new temperature, or the final temperature for both of them, is 38.7 degrees Celsius.